G'day guys, it's Trav here from Neighborhood. Are you looking for more ways to deliver solutions to your customers when you aren't online? This is where setting up a chatbot can help nurture, convert, and gather information on your leads. And today, we're gonna to show you exactly how to set one up. As a heads up, this applies to all hubs to use this feature. And if you're keen on more practical support inside HubSpot, Neighborhood does offer a comprehensive, easy to follow course so you're making the most out of your HubSpot investment. Stay tuned for more info at the end of this video. And if you wanna take your learning offline though, we'll include a free downloadable PDF in the description below. Okay, so let's get started in creating a chatbot. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna go up to conversions here. Uh, and it's under chat flows. Now there's two options that you can sort of play around with here for chatbots. In this instance today, we're gonna to chat through your website chatbot, but it does also offer a Facebook Messenger chatbot, which has the functionality much like it does on the website. So let's get set up on setting up a chatbot on your website. So uh, you'll land here, create your first chat flow. What you wanna do is you wanna create a chat flow. Now, in this instance, like I said before, we've got website and Facebook Messenger. In this instance, we've got the website. Now, uh, if you've got this HubSpot account straight out of the box and you haven't touched it before, you're gonna wanna make sure that your tracking code is installed into the head of every single web page that you're working on. If you've got HubSpot CMS, doesn't matter. It's already pre-installed with all that sort of jazz. If you've got absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, Hit us up in the comments below and we'll definitely show you how to do it. So HubSpot has allowed us a few different options or templates out of the packet on the left hand side. Based on the type of subscription that you've got with HubSpot, whether it's free, starter, pro or enterprise, some of these features might be available or unavailable to you. We have an enterprise account here, so we have access to everything. Um, but if you see a few things that have been grayed out in your portal, don't be alarmed, uh, it's just not available with your current HubSpot subscription. In this instance, we're gonna set up something really simple and I might just talk through some things that might be added on to uh, if it's a little bit more complex. So we just need to be mindful of what the purpose of this chatbot is. Is it to be there live to answer questions or is it there to capture leads and ask questions? Ask yourself this question first. If It, it can be both as well, that's completely fine. Now. We can see at the very top, we've got the live chat functionality, which means that it will pipe through to somebody live and you can talk to them live. The leads qualify bot or the concierge bot that you can see underneath here, this one here is that we were able to ask a few questions and then based on the questions that they answer, we can direct them to somebody that uh, meets the criteria. For example, uh, if, uh, if, if I answer, ask a few questions and the question is, I, I would like to chat to somebody about a new service or uh, I'd like to talk to sales, then in the back end here, we can then go ahead and say, well, if this person answers this, then go pipe it over to Trav. That being said, if we're already a current customer, we could definitely pipe it across to the customer manager as well. So in this instance, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna go to the leads qualify bot because this is the one I kind of play around with a lot. And you can kind of see here on the right hand side, it gives us a bit of an idea of what that's gonna look like. Now, if we click on next, um, we're gonna on the left hand side, see two options. Where is these inquiries gonna to go to uh, and what language is it gonna be? Now, it should default to the inbox uh, inside HubSpot that's already there underneath conversations and then the inbox there. This is where all of those conversations for the chats are gonna be and you can manage those conversations in there for those as well. So I'm happy with how this is all looking. If you've got several inboxes, you'll see a couple of different options there, but in this instance, it's just the inbox and we'll go ahead and create. And this is kind of where you get to have a bit of fun and you can kind of start playing around a little bit. Now, out of the box, it does give you the opportunity and ask you a few questions, like a nice template to start off with, to give you a bit of an idea. Personally, I like to just use this as a good template to change the questions and the answers, and then basically go from there. You can delete all of this and start again, by all means, but let's do something fairly standard. To kick things off, you always wanna make sure you do naming conventions for what the chat is about. So for example, um, if it's gonna be the home page, so we're just gonna say a home uh, chatbot. And I also like to put the date uh, of uh, when this is, just so that you get some context. It obviously will show up, but for me it's just about. So for it, we're actually in July 2022, so I'm just gonna put July 22 there for us now as well. So the top area is gonna be, got any questions, happy to help. And that's the first thing that pops up in the little bubble, uh, in the little bubble down the bottom. Uh, now that's completely customizable. Um, so we can sit here and say, uh, hi there, welcome to our site. Um, let me know if I can be of a hand. 
if I can be a hand. So that's what it's gonna look like at the bottom. Disregard the robot, that's just there for just a, I guess, uh, a template at the moment. Um, but that's a bit of an example of what it's gonna look like. So the next one down we've got here is what would you like to do? Um, now you can click on this and you can edit it. So you can start, start asking specific questions. I like to actually ask what their name is first to help give context. It also helps to understand from a back end as well, collecting progressive profiling information as well. So I can click on this little plus button here uh, and I wanna ask a question and I wanna ask what their name is. So I can sit there and say, get name uh, two. It's probably two because there's probably one underneath that. Get name, um, question one, if you like. Um, and then what's gonna happen is, is it's going to, um, we can do some quick replies, but that's not necessary. Um, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna save uh, to the contact property, contact name. Now we can ask what is your first name? It's probably what you should be doing, not the full name. So, and then we should be able to go first name there and then click on save. So now that we've asked him like, what's your first name? Then we, then we could say, what would you like to do? But because we know their name, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter a token in there. We're gonna do a contact uh, first name. Nice one. So here, so say for example, in this first instance, what's your name, Travis? Nice one, Travis. What would you like? Uh, what would you like to do? And then learn about your products, learn about your pricing, um, and then do not save to a property because we're we're not necessarily wanting to do that at all. So we're going to save that. Now, um, after the next question that we've got here is no problems. Before we get started, can I collect some basic information about your company? And that's going to be exactly the same uh, where we do the quick replies as well. We'll talk about this action based on response just shortly as well. Um, then we got get name. So we've already sort of uh, basically mentioned that. So we want to delete that one there. Uh, and then finally, what's your email address as well? Um, sometimes I like to start with the contact information just in case the chat sort of, um, you know, they close the browser or something along those lines. I like to sort of ask that information up the front just so that we've got it and we can reach back out if we need to as well. And then finally, what's your email? And then finally, send to a team member. So. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way back up here and click on this one here because what I wanna do is I wanna say that if this is gonna be talking about pricing, I want it to speak to sales, but if it wants to learn about the products, I want them to speak to marketing. So I don't want this, the marketing questions to go to the sales and not make use of people's time. So in this instance, I wanna to go to action based on response. Now when I click on this, it's gonna go here and say, okay, learn about your products, learn about your pricing or something else. So if I go learn about your products um, that we've got here, now what we can do is we could go through to uh, go to a new action. So if we go to go to a new action, and then what we want to do is um, we want to send a simple message. And in this instance, I want to say, uh, uh, thanks, we will connect to you. Thanks so much. We're using the contact tokens. So we're just going to go first name. Insert, let me connect you to one of our sales team members. Never, never seem to get spelling right when it's on here. So we're gonna click on save. All right, so we've gone through and we said, thanks, we will contact you. Um, and then we're gonna save this one here and save. So how to sort of visually see this now is that every single time the answer is here, the, uh, the flow of information is gonna go here. Otherwise, it's going to show something back and loop back to the number of employees that we've got, which is the initial questioning. So if we say, learn about pricing, it's gonna pop up and say, thank you so much. Let me connect you to one of our sales team members. Then I'm gonna click on the plus button here. And then what I'm gonna do is send to a team member and um, sales, uh, send to sales. And then I'm gonna assign to uh, specific owners or teams. And then we might want to go to the sales team here. Um, now it gives us two options. If they're there, I've connected you to one of them. I'll look after you from here. Uh, thank you, unfortunately, no one's online. That's based on the status of them being online or offline. And then another one if, um, uh, if it's unassigned or nobody's there as well. Um, there's some options there as well for the notifications and, and online, offline, if you click there. But we'll click on save here. So 
I, I guess basically what we're saying here is, is that if somebody then, so let's go back to the very top. Hi, let me know if I could help out. What's your first name? Then we're gonna ask them, thank you, nice one, first, first name. What, what would you like us to do? Now, if they click on learn about pricing, then it's gonna say, thank you so much. Let me connect you to one of our team members. Then it's gonna send that to the sales team and then they will get notified inside HubSpot you, uh, using a in-app pop-up. But what happens if somebody clicks on, they want to learn more about the products and I want to send that to the marketing team. We'd follow that same process and I'll do it very quickly now. And then I would send that through to the marketing team. So going all the way back, I'm going to click on this here, click on action based responses, learn about products. And we're going to click on that down. I'm going to go to a new action. This one here, I might go through um, in this instance, I'll follow what I've done before. Um, then connect to marketing. Nice one. Um, first name. Let me connect you to one of our marketing team members. And then we'll go through and save. And then we're gonna save this here. So you'll see that there's two options that we've got here now. So we get out of this, we've got two options. So learn about pricing, it's gonna to connect to the sales team. We now learn about the products it's gonna then go to connect to marketing. What we're missing here is we're missing to send it to the marketing guys. So we'll go down, send to a team member, um, send to marketing uh, team member. And we wanna to assign to a team and we wanna to go to the marketing team. That means that they'll all get notified for that one. And that one's there. Now, if we wanted to say something else, that might go through and we might connect it with somebody else. But you can kind of see the logic stepping through here that if somebody asks a question and they select one, we can then change the route that it goes to. Don't uh, forget as well with the action-based responses that we've got here and we go all the way through is that we can go through and actually ask different questions. For example, we can ask another question if you're in a sales capacity and it does go down, learn about pricing. We can start asking more questions about how many people are in your company, uh, what's your revenue, depending obviously on what your company need, what information your sales team needs to know about the company. Obviously offer the email subscription. You can then start setting contact properties if need be, adding them to lists. We can submit tickets. We can book a meeting, which is gonna be highly relevant. So if they do go through and say, I wanna learn more about pricing, instead of sending it to the sales team and just saying you guys don't have capacity internally to be answering those questions, we could click on the plus here and actually book a meeting and then select um, book a meeting, we can go through and you know connect on with that's my meeting link there and it will pop up and then they select the actual meeting from our meeting link inside the actual chatbot itself. Um, that could be an option for you too. But go through, trial it out. One word of advice when putting this together is, is that don't try to rush putting a chatbot together and also ask yourself if you are stepping through this process as a human being, is this gonna annoy you and is it helpful? What I find in many, many instances is that people create these mega chat bots that are just go, or oh, here, there, and everywhere, last too long, ask questions that are not necessary, when realistically it should be simplified. So if you are trying this for the first time, my recommendation is start small, start very simple, and then get feedback from people that are using the service into what questions they could be asking to help better the product as well. Start small, build on, don't go too complex early on in the part as well. So. Moving on from that, you've built out your workflow and everything looks hunky-dory. We move to target. Now target's important because this is gonna show us exactly where we wanna put the chatbot. Now, if we wanted to have the chatbot on every single page of the website, it's already defaulting to that when you got it out of the packet. It's all ready to go. But say, for example, I only wanted it to show on our homepage. If we wanted to do that, especially for our URL, we would go through and say is, and then we could put www nbh.co and then that is our website and it will only show on that url but say if it say contains nbh so that means that it probably still will go on every single page of the website because it does contain that url as well um, begins with matches wildcard or is all pages so start thinking about that in our instance sometimes in the past what we've done is created individual chat bots for each blog so it's contextual so the question that they're asking is hey you're learning more about seo click here if you want to learn more and then we ask questions and then maybe potentially put a white paper or a downloadable PDF to help get that conversion of the lead as well. 
Then you can also have visitor information and behavior, which is optional here that you can see, uh, show up for specific things like if they're in lists, if they're a visitor from a specific country, if they're looking at a device type, browser language, if they've clicked a CTA or days since last visit, forms views, session count, page visits, or referral URL. Now, whatever your instance might be, like to say referring URL, say that you've got a whole bunch of referral traffic coming from a certain site or a certain partner, then you can then contextualize those questionings for those people that have come from that site. So you can get really, really detailed with this. But again, if this is the first time you've tried this, start small and then build into it a little bit. The next tab we've got across here as well is display. So how do we want this to look on our website? Now, if you wanna go through uh, and change the color and all that sort of stuff, you can use the link at the very top there under inbox setting, it's under the brand style as well inside uh, HubSpot. Um, but easy way to click through is inbox settings there. Now you can choose an avatar. I am a massive believer that people build relationships with people in businesses and not businesses. I hate it when I see chatbots with the company name and the company logo there. It's, it's not very human and I don't think everybody should do it. It should be somebody that works at, your, uh, at the company that you work at and it should be a face as well. Uh, G'day, I'm Trav. Uh, if you need any help, reach out. Now, you can definitely put in there to say, this is an automated bot and have a bit of fun with that as well. But I think it should be a human face and not a logo. It just doesn't feel right to me. Then go ahead and change it through. Then you can display behavior. So for example, you can pop up as soon as the page loads, only show when they click on the chat launcher, show the welcome um, when the chat messages pop up as well. Now you can have them pop up on exit intent. So if they go to the top right hand side or the top left hand side, it will pop up automatically. Page time on seconds is seven or percentage scroll at 50%. So that's something to think about as well. Don't try and get in their face to super, super early. So potentially, um, you know, maybe time on page is 10 seconds. Just give them some time to at least consume some of your content. You'll notice our website doesn't have a chatbot. The only place it has a chatbot is on the contact page because if they would like to get in contact with us, we don't want to annoy them with pop-ups everywhere as well. So something to keep in mind. One thing I will say as well is that um, the mobile tab here as well, um, you wanna make sure uh, that if it's on a mobile, it does take up a significant amount of space uh, and it is quite intrusive. So um, have a think about whether just showing that chat launcher is gonna be sufficient for that mobile experience. You don't want things continually popping up in your face. It's just annoying depending on your product or service. And finally, we've got our options here as well. Um, then we can go through um, and have uh, typing delay. So that just makes it pop up and show that somebody's actually going through and typing, but it's just all, it's all fake. Uh, the session timeout, so after one day, you can extend that as well, 30 minutes, one hour, uh, it will just reset. And generic error message, that could be for anything, network issues or something along those lines. We've got availability. The chat is available nine to five. We've set that up in our back end. You can click on that and change it yourself and also GDPR and uh, cookie collection. And you can go through and get that ticked off as well. Uh, you've also got the, uh, because we've got the service hub here, we've got the CSAT survey. So as the chat is completed, you can go ahead and give them a smiley face or an unhappy face to see how your experience has been as well. Once you've got that all done and you follow that process flow through, my recommendation is to click on preview and just preview it for yourself as well, just to sort of see how it goes. So we go here, my name is Trav. Now it should come back to me and say, uh, Thanks, Trav, if I am a betting man. Awesome, so it's popped up there. I can see that there needs to be a space, so just going through and doing a bit of QA. Now I wanna learn about, uh, I wanna learn about pricing. Um, so that should take me through to the sales side of things. Yep, it's going down. Now I see it's allocated it to me, so I've popped up because I'm part of the sales team, and I've clicked on here that I can book a time. Um, now I've, that is completely out of order, but you see how that works as well. Now, once you're ready to rock and roll, um, you just need to turn on this little toggle here. Now, that toggle will work as soon as you turn it on. My recommendation is to go back to the web page that you sort of set in the target, refresh the page, and it should be there. If it's not there, make sure that you've got your tracking code set up correctly. Again, if you've got any troubles with that, hit us up in the comments section below. But that's pretty much how you set up a chatbot. It can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. It can be used for both sales, marketing, or service teams as well to help you get the answer that they need quicker. Again, I will give you a caveat, start really simple and then start to get complex. What we don't want is a really bad experience about somebody in this chat bot just going through and answering these questions. 
the conversion rate will be very low and you're not helping people. And there you have it. You now know how to create a chatbot inside HubSpot. If you're wanting to make the most out of your HubSpot, Neighborhood offers a step-by-step -step course covering marketing, sales, service, CMS Hub in depth, ensuring you and your team are best serving your customers while developing efficient internal processes. We'll leave a link for this in the description below. As well, if you're after a PDF version for what you've learned today, or you wanna pass it on to a mate, we'll include a link in the description as well. Now, if you've gained value from this video, or you're keen to learn more about HubSpot, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. But for now, happy HubSpotting.